Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Pro CS1 from Ox eBikes. We've teamed up with Ox eBikes to offer an exclusive discount on the Pro CS1. So if this is a bike that you are interested in and you're looking to purchase it, go ahead and check out that discount code in the description below. And before we jump into the review, I just wanna thank you guys so much for supporting us. We've really seen the channel grow over this last month. Just wanna ask you guys to keep subscribing, keep liking, keep sharing it so we can grow the channel, get more review opportunities and review those bikes that you guys would like to see. And now that that's out of the way, let's get to the review. First, let's talk about the looks. The Pro CS1 has this very approachable step through, sort of inviting beach cruiser vibe to it. It has those nice big swept back handlebars, comes with a rear rack, and the battery is here down a little bit lower in the center, keeping our center of gravity fairly nice and even. Ox eBikes offers this bike in five different colors. They have got gray, blue, orange, green, and white. The blue one is the one that we are reviewing here today. Now this bike does have those big fat tires, a very upright position. This is definitely a bike that was designed to be approachable and comfortable. And I think from a looks perspective, they pulled that off. Next, let's talk about the motor. The motor we have here is a 750 watt rear hub Bafang motor. Now this particular motor gets us about 80 Newton meters of torque. And with this bike being a beach cruiser sort of vehicle, we're not really looking to do a whole bunch of rapid hill climbing. But the fact that we do have 80 Newton meters of torque does help us get off to a nice good acceleration and reaching those top speeds feels like the bike could do a little bit more. As we mentioned, the nominal output here is 750 watts, though the motor is capable of anywhere between 1300 to 1400 watts peak output. Now in my experience riding it around, it does have a very nice and easy power curve, which makes a lot of sense based on who this bike was built for, what it's going to be doing. You're not going to be doing wheelies off the line as we've seen with some of the other bikes and how they're geared, but it is a very nice steady increase up to those top speeds. As far as motor noise goes, very on par with any other 750 watt Bafang motor, so nothing too quiet, nothing too loud, just very on par and sort of exactly what we'd expect out of this motor. Next, let's talk about the battery. The battery we have here is a Samsung 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hour lithium ion battery. Now the battery here is lockable and removable. Couple things to note here. Now if you do wanna take the battery out, you are gonna to have to remove the seat completely. Another thing to add is you do have to keep the key in the battery while you're using it. Not really a huge deal. As you guys know, my personal preference is I like to be able to take the keys out and retain those myself, but the key is not gonna be in the way as we're pedaling. So not really a huge deal. Just, you know, another thing to keep note of. Now the battery does take four to six hours to get a full charge. Not really a huge deal, kind of the standard here. And we've got 35 miles on the minimum range and 50 55 miles on the max range. Now, after riding it around for a while, I found that the sweet spot for me personally is probably about pedal assist three in the seventh gear. That seemed to be the most comfortable, easy going pace that I would be taking this bike on. So I would probably be looking somewhere closer to 40, 45 miles if I was gonna ride it like that the whole time. As you mentioned earlier, they do utilize Samsung cells. So it's nice to see that big name brand here. They also offer a one year warranty on the battery itself, which is fairly cool. And then after that one year mark, they do a step down pro rated system. So if you have problems after the one year mark, you can still return that battery and get a discount on another battery. And they have that listed out in their warranty section. While we're still on the topic of batteries, Ox eBikes also offers an upgrade to the battery that they have. So if you're looking for a little bit more than that max 55 miles per range, they do offer another battery that you can look at as well. Next, let's talk about the brakes. The brakes we have here are these Tektro Mechanical Aries disc brakes. We do have 180 millimeter discs both on the front and the rear. And as they sit, I don't really have any complaints about them. And I talked with the owners over at Ox eBikes and they let me know that in the very near future, all of their bikes are gonna have hydraulic disc brakes on there. So the one that we got did have a mechanical, but if you purchase this bike, you should be looking at hydraulic brakes here in the next little bit. Next, let's talk about the gears. Up here on the right-hand side, we have got the Shimano SIS Index Shifter. Now this is a seven speed bike and the SIS Index Shifter, as you guys know, one of my favorites, very easy, very simple, very intuitive. And so for a bike like this, I thought that was a really good call to go with that one. And that is connected back here to this Shimano Tourney Derailleur. Again, we've got the seven speed here. And moving on up, we've got these pro wheel cranks and some metal plastic platform pedals. Now me personally, I do like a little bit more foot real estate than I got here with these, but it does offer us a little bit more platform than 
some of the folding pedals. Some of the folding pedals that we get, they are a little bit thinner. This is a little bit wider than that, but if it were my personal vehicle, I would look at getting something that was a little bit wider, and then, you know, that's just a personal preference. Right out of the box, everything shifted really well going through all the gears, so I don't really have any complaints about that. The only negative comment I think I have about the gearing is once we hit that 21, 22 miles per hour, we do get into a little bit of ghost pedaling. Now, that's something we could upgrade with a chain ring, give us something with a little bit more latitude so we can have a little bit more pedaling, and that may alleviate some of the ghost pedaling that we see here. Not a huge deal, just something to know that if you were going those top speeds and you're not just primarily using the throttle, you will notice that you do get a little bit of ghost pedaling there. Next, let's talk about the extras. The Pro CS1 comes with the rear rack here in the back, and as far as rear racks go, I like this one all right. There wasn't anything too special about it. I think it fits the bike really well, sort of the style, the things that we're going to go for here. Plenty of room to mount a bag in the back or some pannier bags. It came out straight, looks good. So yeah, no real complaints there. The other thing I would consider to be an extra on this bike are the fact that all of the lights here are integrated into the battery. So the front light up here in the front, where front lights go, that one is integrated into the battery and you can turn it on and off by using the keypad. And the brake light also integrated into the battery, so no extra weird little batteries you gotta carry around and you also don't have to worry about hopping off the bike to turn on the rear light, which is nice. The only thing I don't see this bike coming with is fenders. Now, depending on where you're going with this, probably something I would look at upgrading. We've also got a spot on the top tube to mount a bottle or some other accessory. That's a pretty nice out of the way spot. And so bonus points for giving us some attachment points here as well. Next, let's talk about the suspension. So first and foremost, there is no form of suspension as we normally see it. There is no rear suspension. There is no front suspension. And even though we don't have any of those traditional forms of suspension, it really was a smooth, comfortable ride. And I think that is due to the big tires that we have up here in the front. And those are the Kenda 26 by four inch tires. Now you do have a lower PSI option. I believe it's like five or six, something like that. And you can also have a max PSI of 30. So if you were on something where it was a little bit of a lighter terrain, if you are are gonna ride it in the sand, someplace like that. Going to a lower PSI is gonna give you a little bit more traction and allow you to get over some of those softer surfaces a little bit better. The other part of suspension that we talk about is the butt suspension. And here we actually do have some legitimate butt suspension. We've got this nice big comfort saddle here and then we've got those two big springs in the back. And I found that it almost acted as a suspension seat post. Maybe a suspension seat post would give us a little bit more of a soft ride, but even having those nice big butt springs in there, it did the job really well. Next, let's talk about the controls. The screen we have here is a SW900 and we are used to seeing this. We see them on quite a few different e-bikes, very simple to use. And then over here on the left-hand side, we get this very simple three button keypad, which makes the whole interface very simple and easy to use. We're gonna turn the bike on by holding down this middle button. And once the bike is on, it's gonna show us a few things here on the readout. It's gonna show us our battery level, our trip distance, our odometer, the speed that we're going, our level of pedal assist, and it's also gonna show us the watts that we're pulling. Now having the watts here is nice because it's gonna let us know how efficient this bike is in certain scenarios. To turn the lights on, all you gotta do is press and hold the up arrow. That's gonna turn the lights on, turn them off. So if you've been around e-bikes before, this is gonna be something that's very similar to a lot of the e-bikes that you've been on. Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. If you're deciding if a particular e-bike is for you, I think the first and probably most important thing is to make sure that it fits you. Now, there's plenty of ways to measure yourself for a bike. I'm not gonna go over that in depth right here. There are a lot of people who've put out really good videos on how to measure yourself for a bike, but we are gonna talk about two of the most important things, in my opinion, that's gonna be the reach and the standover height. So the reach here is in between 12 to 15 inches, depending on where you've got your saddle, where you've got your handlebars put up, and that is very approachable for pretty much anybody. The next thing we'll look at is the standover height. So this is a step through and the standover height we have here is 20 inches. Now the top tube here does go up at quite a slant so it gets higher as you move away from the bike but from where you should be standing off the bike it's about in between 19 to 21 inches for the standover height here. And then when it comes to saddle we have got a 30 inch minimum saddle height and a 39 inch maximum saddle height and a 29.5 inch width here at the handlebars. 
So if we've gone through some of those measurements and you're saying, hey, you know, I think this bike will fit me. Next, let's talk about the use case. Now, in my opinion, the people who would be looking for this bike are people that live in an urban area. You've got plenty of sidewalk to ride on. Maybe you want to take it on some really nice bike paths. I think that's also fine. Or if you're adventurous and you want to take it to the beach, we've got those big fat tires and that should be able to accommodate that as well. Now, the battery does give us a decent range, but I'm not really thinking about this as a commuter bike. I'm not thinking about this as an off-road bike. If it were going to be my personal vehicle and I was going to be using it for a specific use case, it would be heading down to the boardwalk maybe scooting around to go get something small at a gas station or go hang out with friends. I don't really see this being a business vehicle. Really, it's more of something to have fun on, something that's a little bit more for leisure. And then if you were looking for a bike that has a nice upright position and a small standover height to do some morning calisthenics, then this is something that would fit that bill in my opinion. Now that's going to cover the nuts and bolts of the review. We have got a separate ride test video, though we are going to show a little bit of that ride test here just at the end. And before we jump into that, guys, just want to thank you so much for supporting the channel. Ask that you would like and subscribe. Hit that little bell notification so you can be notified when we come out with new videos. And yeah, thank you so much. Let's hop on to the ride test. Hey guys, welcome outside to yet another ride test today. We are on the Pro CS1 from Ox eBikes. Now this is a beach cruiser, step through, comes with a rack, nice standover height, very manageable as far as the reach goes. Uh, integrated front lights, integrated rear lights, 750 watt motor, some nice springs in the butt for suspension here, plus we got the big fat tires and that's pretty much what I'm going to talk about as far as specs goes. If you want to see more of those specs we have a full in-depth review on it. This is basically the ride test. We're going to feel it out, see how how she rides and talk about that. So let's go ahead and kick it off. First let's go ahead and pedal this around as if it were not an electric bike. Go ahead and shift down. I always forget to do that. I get somewhere and I leave it in seventh. So let's see, so all right here, so we're in first gear. Let's go ahead and go from first to second. Nice shift there, second to third, good shift. Third to fourth, good shift. Fourth to fifth, fifth to sixth, six to seven. Now all those were very good. Six to seven stalls just a bit, but it does eventually just kind of drop right in there. So really no complaints as far as the shifting goes. Let's go ahead and turn around and power her on let's uh let's do throttle only now you'll notice it is in pedal assist level zero but we can still use the throttle some bikes will have that set in as kind of a safety feature where you can turn the throttle off by putting on a pedal assist level zero now with this one that's not the case so there's something to be aware of and you are going to be able to get to top speed here by using the throttle now as far as the ride goes even though we don't have that traditional front fork we don't have that rear suspension it is still a nice comfortable ride with those big fat tires and those those butt springs so let's go ahead and test out the pedal assist put in pedal assist level one now something to note pedal assist level one on this one is actually i think it's like five miles per hour or so i'm gonna go ahead and stop now it being five miles per hour it is a little bit on the slower side i think it may be the slowest Pedal assist one, sorry about that, five miles per hour. We'll go to pedal assist level two. That's gonna take us up to 10 or 11-ish. And pedal assist level three. We do get a nice bump there in pedal assist level three. That's gonna take us to about that 16, 17 miles per hour. Now this, if it were me and I could only pick one Sort of configuration for the bike. This is how I'd ride. Pedal assist level three, seventh gear on this side. It's a very easy pedaling cadence. I feel like I'm getting some pretty good speed. No ghost pedaling. Good to go. As we said, there is more to the ride test that is its own separate video. So if you want to see a little bit more of the actual ride test, go ahead and check out that video. And now we've come to the part of the review that I call my final thoughts. Now, these won't be my final thoughts because I imagine that I'll be having thoughts um, well into the future, but these are my final thoughts on the bike as it relates to this review. 
From a looks perspective, I think they nailed the beach cruiser vibe. Now we didn't talk too much about the materials or the welds here, but all of the welds were very nice. It does have a feeling of being a mid-tier electric bike. Now we get some bikes that their price tag says they're mid-tier, but the components maybe don't line up or you know the welding might not be as good, but I feel like they have a very solid product here with the Pro CS1. As far as the components go, everything here was very on par. I would expect to see everything here at this price range. The only thing that maybe I would want to have and maybe not see the price change too much is adding those hydraulic brakes. And we did talk about them bringing those on in the future. From a ride perspective, this thing was extremely comfortable, especially for a bike that doesn't have any front fork suspension or rear suspension. As we mentioned, the only real suspension we have are those seat springs, but we do have that coupled with a very upright ride and those big fat tires. So the ride for me was very nice. Now we've reviewed a couple of beach cruisers in the past and they have a twist throttle and I found personally that put a lot of strain on my wrist just the way the handlebars kind of sweep back and then also having to twist my wrist that didn't feel very good so the fact that they went with this thumb throttle here I think was a big thumbs up for me. Another aspect of the ride that I normally comment on is the speed. I like to go fast. I prefer bikes that have a lot more torque to it, and that's just my riding style. That's, that's what I like to do. Now, the Pro CS1 wasn't exactly that. However, based on who their target audience is and who would be riding this bike, I think having that nice, easy, power curve is the way to go. It felt like everything was tuned well. There wasn't any weird gaps between, you know, pedal assist two to three. So for me as a reviewer looking at that, it does seem very intentional, which sort of gets bonus points for being intentional. I feel like some of these e-bike companies just throw some parts together, slap a label on it, and start shipping it across the sea. But it seems like Ox e-bikes is here for the long haul. And so some of these things where they're being real intentional about the things that they're picking to put on the bikes, that's just good news for me as a reviewer because I know that they're thinking about it, which means they're probably also thinking about the future of the business. And again, those are all really good things for people that are looking to buy. You know, you have that customer support, you'll have that longevity. You're not buying a bike and then a year later the company's gone. I don't think Ox eBikes is on that track. So again, as a reviewer, it's nice to see stuff like that. And that is going to do it for our review of the Pro CS1 from Ox eBikes. If you want to know more about them, I'll have a link down to Ox eBikes website in the description. And if you guys have any questions for us or there wasn't something we covered here in the video, please let us know down in the comments. Love talking to you guys and we'll catch you on the next one.